What's up? I'm Hutch and you need to understand BPPV because this is one of the most common vestibular conditions that you'll treat and you need to know how to treat your patients and also pass the NPTE. Benign paroxysmal positional vertigo involves those little otoconia or crystals being displaced into the semicircular canals. Now remember those canals send signals to your brain about rotational movement. So when there's a crystal in there, it throws off how your body registers movement and can cause intense vertigo or spinning. The posterior semicircular canal is the most often affected canal and BPPV is usually very treatable and very curable within a couple sessions, but then it recurs pretty commonly as well. There are two different types, canalithiasis, where the otoconia is in the actual semicircular canal and cupulolithiasis, which is when the otoconia gets in the cupula, which is really sticky and it can be a lot harder to dislodge it and your symptoms will last a little bit longer. A really big hallmark is vertigo triggered by positions. You can also have nausea, instability, and head tilt toward the affected side. Remember, there are three different orientations of those semicircular canals, so you'll have to test and treat them each a little bit differently. To test the horizontal canals, you'll do the horizontal roll test. With your patient in supine with their head slightly flexed, you quickly turn the head 90 degrees to one side. Once symptoms subside, you turn them back to neutral, and then repeat on the opposite side. Whichever side has worse symptoms, whether it be nystagmus or vertigo, that's the side that's most likely affected. Note that with all of these tests, you wanna wait after each position, watch the symptoms, see how long it takes them to subside, and wait for them to do so before moving on to the next position. If they have geotropic nystagmus, meaning that their eyes beat towards the ground, that lasts less than 60 seconds, then they have horizontal canalysiasis. You'll use the barbecue roll test to treat this. With the patient in supine, you'll turn the head towards the affected side, turn it towards the opposite side, have them roll their whole body so they're prone, and then finally roll onto the affected side. If they have ageotropic nystagmus, which lasts greater than 60 seconds, and ageotropic is nystagmus beating away from the ground or towards the sky, then they have horizontal cupulolithiasis. You'll use the Appiani maneuver to treat this disorder. So starting in a seated position, you'll quickly lay them on their affected side, turn their head towards the floor, and then sit them back up. Anytime that you have cupulolithiasis, you want to do a really quick movement to help dislodge the otoconia from that sticky cupula. The posterior and anterior semicircular canals are tested the same way via the dix Hallpike maneuver. Starting in a seated position, you'll have the patient turn their head toward the affected side. Then you'll quickly drop them back with their head supported in a little bit of extension. You can repeat this on the other side. And actually, usually I would do the side that I suspect isn't affected first so that they're not dealing with those symptoms when I want to test the other side. The side that's worse is usually the affected side, and if the nystagmus is torsional and upbeating, it usually indicates the posterior semicircular canal, versus torsional downbeating indicates the anterior semicircular canal. But it really doesn't have an impact in how you're going to treat this. If they have torsional nystagmus that lasts less than 60 seconds, then they have canalysiasis, and you'll treat them using the Epley maneuver. The Epley maneuver starts with the Dix Hallpike maneuver, so you'll do that first. Once they're laying on your back, you'll then have them turn their head towards the unaffected side. Then you'll have them roll to their side, keeping their head and their body in the same relation, so they'll end up looking towards the ground. And again, once their symptoms subside, you'll have them sit back up. If they have torsional nystagmus that lasts greater than 60 seconds, then they have cupulolithiasis, and you'll want to treat them using the modified Samant which my class affectionately referred to as the double yeet. So you'll start in a sitting position with a head turned towards the unaffected side. Then you quickly lay them on their side on the affected side. Once symptoms subside, you quickly sit them up, move them back through a sitting position, and lay them on their other side. And then once symptoms subside, you sit them up. Again, those quick movements are really important to dislodge the otoconia from the sticky cupula. Now, in addition to these treatments, you can also do oculomotor treatments as well as balance training to improve any other deficits and help retain your results. Now it's time for NPTE Jeopardy. Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. Remember, this is for patients with a positive horizontal roll test with ageotropic nystagmus or nystagmus lasting greater than one minute. The quick movement involved helps dislodge the otoconia from the cupula. 
Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy, or you can drop a comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Otherwise, good luck studying. Go change the world.